Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I've been a little under the weather, so videos have had to take a break till I got better and was able to think clearly on some of these tech articles that I had promised to do and wanted to do. So we're going to pick up where we had left off week before last on episode two of Back to EMAP. We're going to talk about one of my proposed solutions in tuning for cars with high back pressure. Now, if you remember to that video, we had an Evo 8 that the owner wanted the tune pushed on a 6466 to the absolute limit. Highest boost I've gone on a 6466 in a while. It was peaked out at 50 pounds, I believe. 440, yeah, 447 kPa. And as we covered then, and you can see it in front of you, the VE dramatically tapered off above 315 kPa or 31 and a half pounds. The, as we turned the boost up, the percentage of VE kept dropping and dropping and dropping. Like here we're 90, here we're 75 at 7,500 RPM. So to give you an idea, that's 17% drop as the boost went up. So the reason, of course, is back pressure was going up every time we turned the boost up. The car continued to make power, but the power moved to the left. And you can go watch that video uh, if you wanted to refresh on that. So we're going to talk about a solution I have. We're going to talk about a couple of the reasons why I would do it this way versus just having a VE map that looks like this. Now, in the Infinity software and in most softwares, you can do a fuel trim. I populated one here already to make this a little bit easier to discuss. <clears throat> On the, the left side, we have manifold pressure. Okay, pretty basic. Down here we have back pressure, which this car wasn't logging. So fortunately I have data. I know roughly where the back pressure was likely to have been. But we can see the percentages. And this is a table that you would normally only populate when you do have a back pressure sensor. So we can see here 450 kPa, it's way up. If we were a one-to-one -one back pressure, there's not going to be any fuel correction. But as it continues to go up, we're going to get out here 675 kPa back pressure. I'd be pulling 16%, which is that differential that we saw from 315 out to 450. Now, I'm just guessing that that's where it was. I've seen 50 pounds of back pressure be 80 pounds or 50 pounds of boost to be 80 pounds of back pressure before 1.6 to 1. We're just going to use it as an example. Obviously, this particular car, we don't know what the back pressure was other than we know what the effect of the VE was. Now, a lot of people, when I brought this up a, a year ago on a forum, were like, ooh, why would you do that? Just tune the car. Well, there's a very good reason, I feel, for why I would do it this way. Presuming that you did have enough turbine housing and never ran into back pressure problems at sea level and you're racing and you're fine and maybe you can run the 50 pounds. If you were to go to high altitude, the back pressure goes up or the back pressure, excuse me, stays constant as the boost drops. So then you force more boost into it. Your back pressure value is gonna go up and you're gonna end up here anyway. So rather than wasting passes, let's say you're at a half mile event or a drag event at 6,000 feet. I'd like to use Colorado as an example. Rather than wasting passes to try to get your tune back, if you have this data, you could populate a, a table like this really, really fast. Because what we're more concerned with tuning is not what the back pressure does to VE. We want to know what the VE of the engine is. Because you could go change a turbine housing. You could change a turbo. You get 
big enough turbos, you start changing the turbo. Really, your tune doesn't change. Your back pressure changes. So all of a sudden, you might not need to have this big, huge clip in here because now you have more turbine wheel, more turbine housing to move the exhaust gas out so your EMAP stays lower. So for me, or to me rather, the main reason I would do this is this is a, a lot faster way and it's not terribly difficult to populate because you can push any turbo way past what it's comfortable doing on a dyno to, to get this data. But it seems to be pretty consistent based on what I've seen is that as the numbers go up, maybe not a direct mathematical relationship, but as the back pressure goes up, the VE is going to drop. So you can make some guesses. And I've seen anywhere from 13 to 15% drop. Some motors, it does it way, way sooner. A K24 will do it at 30 pounds of boost. This particular 2 liter 4G63 did it at 50. My V6 probably is doing it at 20. So, you know, everything's going to be different, or a V8 might even be less. Um, everything's going to be different, but you're going to see a similar trend to where you can throw some numbers in, get a, a rough idea, and then keep your, your tune a little bit more linear, where maybe what you would do, let's grab this, you might do something like this, and have have a more flattened, normal looking VE map and just make a correction versus the the VE fuel trim is what I call it. I named that table, but at any rate, fuel trim number one is what it is by default in a infinity table. And this would allow you to have a tune that dependent independent of density altitude change is going to be really, really close. So maybe you only have to waste one hit going out versus you're going to spend three or four just trying to figure out where your tune is. And we use engines and combinations typically that are limited lifespan. Or maybe we just don't have that much time in the day. You, you need to make every pass count. This is a tool you could use to help speed that up. It's not to say it's the best way, but it's definitely something that you can do to help keep the car a little bit closer. Now, the other thing that's nice is if you change the turbo and maybe you can run 500 kPa of boost. So 50, what, 57 pounds, 60 pounds. Come out here and at 500 KP of back pressure, zero. So as you go up on a turbo, realistically, this isn't going to interfere with you because your back pressure should be going down also. Or you change the turbine housing. The back pressure shouldn't be affecting you. This table won't affect you. This is just kind of a way to catch some of those changes to where unless you knew that your table was going to look like this and have this step from 90 down to 75 in 19 pounds of boost in, you know, 190 kPa, that <coughs> you are going to make a hit. The car is going to be really rich. It's probably going to start fouling out plugs or misfiring, and you're going to chase your tail trying to find a bunch of things where now you're set up for success to start with. Anyway, guys, it's one idea I had, I've used, seems to work. You do have to have a back pressure sensor fitted and data logging. Um, depending on, on your ECU, you may or may not be able to do this as easily. Um, you might have to do it under a generic fuel correction, or in this case, it's a main fuel trim. But it's a strategy you can employ. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Hope you enjoy this uh, tech tip. 
we're going to get back into the swing of things uh, here in the in the coming weeks. Basically, the race season's over. Everybody headed to Texas. My car's not going to go since I wasn't feeling good. I didn't didn't want to spend the the time and money to force myself to do something that I might not be able to do. But anyway, I'm feeling better, so there's that. Uh, hope you all are doing good. If this is something that you uh, like as far as tech content and you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you have a friend you think that might enjoy it, please consider sharing it with them. And if you want notified of new content as it's added, uh, click on the bell icon and YouTube will do that automatically. Take care, guys. Bye.